Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Alicia. Some folks call me Lou. And today I thought it'd be fun to give you a glimpse into our renovated shotgun house in the beautiful, swampy, hot, sticky city of New Orleans and give you a little glimpse into the process of our gut renovation. Let's go. In the summer of 2020, I got the itch to renovate a house with my amazing partner, Ian. I wasn't loving my living situation. We were renting a double shotgun at the time, and we had just come out of like the intensive COVID lockdowns, and we were just feeling really cooped up. We had a one-bedroom, one-bath shotgun, double shotgun, and we were just ready to live in a more lively part of town where we could easily you know, walk to get groceries, walk to grab a drink if we wanted to, hear live music. We eventually found an affordable but very rundown gallery style shotgun house in the New Marigny neighborhood of New Orleans. Now, many of you are probably familiar with the French Quarter. If you haven't experienced it yourself, you've more than likely seen it on movies or read about it in books. Our home is situated in a neighborhood called the New Marigny, which is less than a mile from the French Quarter it's in the New Marigny neighborhood also known as Faubourg St. Rock. So you'll hear people call it both. It's usually referred to as St. Rock, which is home to restaurants, bars, and lots of historic charm. I'm not going to lie. This renovation was such a doozy for us. We were wholly unprepared for the amount of work and stress it would put on us. We kind of went in looking for a fixer upper, but not a total gut. And when we found this house, we knew it was a lot of work and we knew it was going to be extensive, but we really didn't know that we would basically be rebuilding the whole house from the studs up. I spent about one month reworking the plans, doing all of the drafting work. And so once the planning and permitting phase were over, we started the demolition process. For the demolition, we needed to keep that front facade of the house intact, or at least keep it historically relevant, which I wanted to do anyway. I wanted to be sensitive to any renovations that we did that you could see from the street. You know, the houses in the neighborhood are just so beautiful and historically important that I didn't want to change anything really except for the paint color. We basically demolished everything in the house except for that front facade. Aside from that, nothing was really salvageable. The house needed all new plumbing and electrical work, plus a new HVAC unit. On top of rebuilding all of the mechanical systems and interior walls in the house, we also added an additional 10 feet to the back of the house where the primary suite is located. And this required additional foundation to be poured to bear the weight of the new structure. We also had new foundation poured on the side of the house where our new side porch would be located. Once we were fully demolished and the foundations poured, it was time to put new sheathing on the exterior of the house. This really transformed the way that the house looked. Once that old siding was pulled off and the new sheathing was in place, it instantly polished the whole look of the house and you could see it kind of all come together. Next comes the windows, doors, and the Tyvek. If you don't know, Tyvek is a house wrap that is engineered to keep homes cool in the summer, warm in the winter, and dry all year round. Got that from their website. <laughs> the more you know. For our windows and doors, we work with Pella to get these beautiful custom windows and doors. They are from the Pella Reserve series. They are aluminum clad on the exterior and wood on the interior. And what I liked about the wood on the interior is that you can paint it. Whereas with vinyl window, you're kind of stuck with whatever color the vinyl is. So maybe they've improved them lately, but I wanted the wood. To me, that felt a little more historic. I was going for a little touch of historic, a little touch of contemporary. It just felt right for us and for the neighborhood and for the house. 
Once the windows and doors were in place, the crew began to build out the interior, starting with the walls. And at this point, all of the hard work of working and reworking the floor plans paid off. Um, you can see the 2D lines that you've been staring at for weeks in AutoCAD come to life. And we could test out each room spatially to make sure it would meet our needs. And that is probably the coolest part of a renovation. Once the walls are up, you're still only like 25% of the way to the finish line. It feels like you've made this huge accomplishment, but really there's just so much more beyond that. You still need insulation, drywall, plumbing fixtures, light fixtures, paint, flooring, etc., etc., etc. I'm anxious to zoom past all of that gobbledygook and just show you the pretty stuff. The front of the house was the most precious feature, in my opinion. I wanted to preserve all of the original details and materials as a way of respecting its history. There were years of thick paint and caulk that had to be sanded down before we could start painting. And, you know, we took the task of painting this ourselves. In fact, all of the painting was done by the two of us. Thank you very much. Uh, which honestly took the better part of two years to complete. I'm a huge Wes Anderson fan and wanted the palette of the house to be reminiscent of a Wes set. From the jump, I knew I wanted to have a pink house. Not sure why, but I knew that's what I wanted. And then I just basically built the rest of the palette off of that. I also knew that I wanted the interior to be colorful playful and represent our personalities. Um, so for the entry in studio, which is what we refer to the front room as, I wanted to go bold with the color. With the front of the house, you know, sitting directly in front of the sidewalk, I knew that you'd be able to see the interior of this room from the street. So I thought a playful color would be a fun choice. We went with this blue color and we used a slightly darker blue color for the trim to add a bit of visual interest. I love having a small entryway because it gives you a little breathing room visually when you walk through the front door and it's obviously, you know, a great spot for dropping hats, keys, shoes, etc. And I think the mirror adds a nice pop of color as well. This room is mainly used as my office and painting space. I am self-employed and work from home as an interior designer so having a space that was playful and you know not too serious was important to me i've had this easel for years and i love standing in that corner to paint i i see the action on the street and there's a lot of that i wanted to add a little drama to the room with the window treatment so i opted for a golden ochre yellow velvet curtain purchased from amazon for like 60 dollars a pack super affordable considering how much fabric there is. I added this sheer curtain so that we could bring light into the room but also maintain some sense of privacy if we wanted. When we bought the house the hallway did not exist. There was one long open corridor through the right side of the house that connected all the rooms. I knew I wanted to reconfigure this space so that all the rooms would be private and that's what we did. Moving the hallway to the center of the space allowed for us to have closet space and a built-in desk area on the left side and a bedroom plus a full bath on the right hand side. When we bought the house there wasn't this extra bathroom in the front of the house there was just one bathroom in the back of the house so we knew we wanted to add at least one more bathroom. Since the left side of our house sits directly on the property line we were unable to add any windows per the building code. We were able to keep any existing windows which we did in the kitchen but since no windows existed in this part of the house when we bought it, we weren't able to add them. That meant closets. Shotgun houses in New Orleans are notorious for having no storage space, which we experienced firsthand in our previous residence. So the idea of having all of this closet space felt very luxurious to us. 
To break up the long stretch of wall space, I added a built-in desk and storage area to the left there. And I think it creates a nice rhythm to the hallway, makes it feel a little less confined. These pendants were a must for me. I knew that I wanted something somewhat dramatic, but also pared back a bit. I had been eyeing these bank pendants from Anne Tradition for years, and I knew I had to have them for this house. We had to hang them high enough so that they wouldn't smash into the closet doors. We opted for eight foot tall doors, which I think kind of worked perfectly with our, I think, 10 foot six inch ceilings and would make the house feel larger than it is. And it totally works. Our guest bathroom is located opposite of the closet. And here I decided to go with a warm peachy pink color and a dark vanity top. The flooring in here is Saltillo tile from Lowe's, literally the cheapest tile you can find at Lowe's, but it's so pretty. The vanity is flanked with these two Tala pendant lights. Tala, this company makes the most gorgeous blown glass LED light bulbs I've ever seen. And the pendants are really just two hanging sockets and bulbs. So those Tala bulbs just really make it feel like a special pendant. And really it's just a socket with a light bulb. The tub and toilet are separated by a pocket door, which I thought would be a nice way to have some privacy and be a little more functional in here. So if you had, you know, friends or family staying with us, one person could get ready in the vanity area while the other person, you know, took a dump or took a shower. The tile around the shower is nothing special. It's white subway tile from Lowe's, which the contractor actually installed in the wrong pattern. If I could go back in time, I would make him tear it out and redo it. But I'm a bit of a pushover. I'm working on it and I just rolled with it. And I, that's my biggest regret in this house is not making him tear out the tile and do it the right way. Okay, anyway, moving on to Poppy's room. The room is on the smaller side, but the room is truly the perfect size for a nursery. I wanted it to be just slightly feminine and not overtly pink and purple and scream, you know, girl. I already had this cute little ceramic mushrooms and Ian gifted me this lovely mushroom poster. So I decided to sort of loosely build off of that. The walls are a really light lilac color. So I'll link the color below if I can find it. We were very thrifty with the furniture in here. Half of it was probably purchased on Facebook Marketplace. The crib is actually a mini crib and has been wonderful for us. It sits on casters and can easily be moved around the house. And I opted for a minimal decor because I didn't want to overwhelm her little developing brain. These drapes are a really nice chartreuse color and they actually used to be our linen duvet cover. When we upgraded to a king mattress, I decided to retire the duvet but I love the color so much. I was like, I'm going to do something with these one day. And then lo and behold, it was kind of perfect for the nursery. I think chartreuse complements lilac really well. It's a whole color wheel thing. Now it's cliche, but the kitchen is truly the heart of our home. It's absolutely the hub for us, not to mention the beautiful view and accessibility to the deck outside. The kitchen is relatively small, but very mighty. And we've got lots of vertical storage as well as some display open shelving for the prettier things. We went with soapstone countertops against the advice of literally everyone. I have absolutely no regrets. Everyone was telling us, oh, they'll chip so easily. Oh, you can scratch it with your fingernail. Oh, there's such a maintenance hassle. Literally none of those things are true. I'm just a big fan of natural materials in general, so it made sense for us. We worked with a local mill worker to design and build our cabinets. He was wonderful to work with and surprisingly affordable. Shout out to Colt. This space gets a lot of natural light during the day. These are all south facing windows, so the whole room stays bright all day long. So having the darker kitchen elements really added a nice contrast to all the brightness and whiteness in the walls. Our intention was to tile the backsplash as well, but honestly, we ran out of money and time and we just like didn't have it in us. The space is awesome for entertaining because of the connection to the living room. And then the living room is really just an extension of the kitchen. I know this may be controversial, but we are a TV family. And we love the fact that we can see our TV from the kitchen. There, I said it. Really, it's just about having like the background noise for us. So, 
The dining area is right here across from the kitchen and really just acts as additional counter space for the kitchen. The dining table is literally never, never this empty. This dining set was a Facebook Marketplace find. I think I snagged it for like 50 bucks and I just painted the chairs black. Otherwise it would be just a little too country kitchen for my liking. In the corner is Ian's pepper chest where he keeps all of his fermenting peppers and other questionable experiments. Ian makes and bottles his own hot sauce to sell at farmer's markets. So this is where all that production happens. You do have to open that cabinet door with caution. It's like a giant pepper fart if you open it too fast. The living room is really just a glorified toddler playroom at this point. We turned the built-in storage on the peninsula to Poppy's toy chest. We also emptied all of the lower shelves of our record storage and made that Poppy's toy land. I find this space to be so comfortable, especially in the evening when the lights are low and all of our lights are on dimmer switches, which I highly recommend. If you have the option, just do it all, every single one of them. Dimmer switch. You won't regret it. The furniture in here is a mix of things purchased from Ikea, friends, hand-me-downs, and Facebook Marketplace. I have an eclectic, um, indecisive interior design style and I really love collecting objects over time and allowing you know our style to evolve with our changing tastes. Now I'm a huge fan of the Ottoman coffee table for people with babies and toddlers. This Ottoman has been Poppy's hub since she was a wee baby crawling around on the floor pulling up um, she learned how to pull up on this ottoman, and we never really had to worry about her falling face first into it while she was learning how to walk, and that is, like, just a blessing. This sofa has been great for us. Just the, it's just the right depth, in my opinion, and we can all pile on here with room to spare. It's the Andy's sofa from West Elm, which I'll link below. They still have it. It's, like, an iconic West Elm piece at this point. Behind the sofa, we have our bar stools facing into the kitchen, but if I'm being honest, they don't get used that much because they are very uncomfortable. Also another Facebook Marketplace purchase that I painted in this beautiful, I think it's called Radicchio from Benjamin Moore. I'll link it below. Cute, pretty, very uncomfortable. When the weather is nice, which is about two weeks out of the year down here, we can open up all the windows and doors and it creates the most magnificent vibe. Ian grills out there all the time and it's just nice to keep an eye on him while he's out there doing his thing. Finally, we've arrived in the primary bedroom. I freaking love the light in this room. We basically have surround sound in here, but with windows. The French doors open up into our small little backyard and that is just like everything to me. The doors faced east, so the sun rises right through these doors, so it gets really bright in here in the morning which is fine if you're a morning person which I'm not just kidding I am now I have a baby so who am I kidding morning person in terms of decor we've kept it quite simple but one thing that isn't minimal is Ian's display of stuff Ian is a collector and this is one of the few places where I let him display it all thing that I believe makes this room so special are the double doors leading to the bathroom. We purchased these beauties from a local architectural salvage store and I think they add so much character, so much warmth to this room, love them so much. And they lead into our bathroom, which was such a luxury for us because we were coming from our rental, which had a bathroom the size of an RV bathroom. So tiny, so sad, no windows. So this was a major upgrade for us. We used the same Saltillo terracotta tile that we used in the guest bathroom from Lowe's. And I just freaking love the warmth it adds to the space. We went with a huge tub shower combo because I wanted a tub that I could really soak in, but also shower in. The tile is the same as the guest bath. Cheap subway tile in the wrong pattern. Still bitter. We went with an economical tile in the bathroom so we could splurge on more luxurious items like central AC, new plumbing, new electrical, luxury. We went with a prefab bathroom vanity from Signature Hardware and I've really enjoyed this vanity. 
but my one gripe is that black is a horrible color for the bathroom because it requires a lot of cleaning and a lot of dusting and I just don't I'm not down for that. We have Delta Trinsic fixtures for all of our bathroom fixtures. Good quality, pretty well priced if you ask me. The sconces were also a great deal from Wayfair. I think probably $90 a pop. To top it all off, we have ourselves a little walk-in closet, you guys. It is purely functional and works just fine for us. We don't need to see too much of the closet. And then I'm just gonna walk you around outside. This space has come a long way. It may look sad and simple to you, but to us, this whole backyard has completely transformed. It went from a huge dirt and mud pit to green grass, which we lovingly, painstakingly nurtured. We started with mulching the whole backyard and the grass just kind of grew in very slowly over the course of two years. We're just so pleased with our green, green grass. So there you have it, folks. A little inside peek into our renovated shotgun house in New Orleans. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, maybe even comment what you liked, what you disliked about this renovation. My feelings won't get hurt. I'll see you next time. Bye.